Three, two, one. Hey, internet friend. This is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got a friend online, and her name is Amy Schoen. Did I pronounce it right? Schoen? Schoen. Schoen, like the sun shown. Past tense, yeah. Sun shown. Yeah. <laughs> Past tense. Instead of a sunset, it's like the sun shown, and now it's gone, right? <laughs> so, Amy, where are you? What part of the world are you located in? Yeah, so I'm in the Washington, D.C. area. I live in Maryland, in Rockville, Maryland. Okay. Yeah, so I've Inside. been here uh, for a long while, although I uh, grew up in the New York area, on Long Island, outside the city, and, you know, have ties there. Sure, but, you're um, working been your way down the coast. Yeah, I've been here for over 30 years, you know. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, I went to school here and never left, yeah. Married and got kids? Um, yeah, well, yeah, my story is I got married, I got divorced, and then I got remarried, and then I had a child. So um, I'm a later mom. I got remarried at, in my 40s and, and had my child in my 40s. And I was, uh, my brand name's called Motivated to Marry, and I was motivated to get married and have a family. And I wrote a book called Get It Right This Time because I didn't. And okay. um, I think everybody in their 20s they should, or, um, all parents should get hire a life coach because I, I married the wrong person and I was in the wrong profession. I actually have a mechanical engineering degree. <laughs> well, you can't really predict the future. Like with, I don't have any children, but uh, there's no owner's manual for kids. That they're, they're always different. And same thing with relationships and marriage and stuff. You don't know how it's all going to go. I mean, I didn't get married till I was 53 and I've been through a lot of relationships, but uh, none that came to a married situation. So I waited and waited and waited, waited. <laughs> well, some of us jump in. I got married at 25 and yeah. didn't really know what I wanted. I mean, I thought he was the right guy. We both thought we were in the right situation, but life takes turns and, yep. you know, and we found ourselves in our mid thirties and, and he really wanted to go a different direction than I did. And, um, it was hard for me, but I, you know, worked on myself. I think it's really important to get clear about what you want for your life and what your goals are and what's important to you. And with that clarity, you know, it was greatest self-knowledge. And with that greatest self-knowledge, you can make better decisions for yourself about who's a good partner. So a lot of my clients have been divorced or widowed or um, the widowers, you know, I mean, they may have had a good partnership, but, you know, they want a new partnership and they're in a different place in their life. And, and what was appropriate for them when they got married in their 20s and 30s may not work when they're in their 50s and 60s or beyond. So um, that's what the coaching does. The coaching is really about helping you really like see what you want for your life and what's important to you. What are those really critical values you need to honor in um, a, a new relationship? And also to build some boundaries for yourself. Some of us didn't choose well the first time. And so to make better choices and set up and really get a clear, clear picture of what's. Yeah, and, so, and sometimes like I'm, I'm an advocate of coaches. It's the, the, like some people might look at it and go, well, you were married and divorced. How could you be a coach? Well, it isn't really that about that. It's, I think if a person could be a coach, even if they would, were never married, because they're looking at it from a different point of view. Stepping back. Well, and, we have a set of tools, exactly. We have tra yeah. training. I went through Coach Training Institute, the Coactive Institute, and I got my, uh, my, my, um, my certification, and then I got certified by the ICF, and they have actual these core competencies. So there is like, I, there's over 200 hours of training, you know, that I have mm -hmm. as a coach. And so we bring that to every client. And so what's interesting is sometimes clients come to me and they want relationships, but there's so many other things going on in their lives that we right. need to address. And sometimes we have to take care of those things before they're really ready for that relationship to come into their lives. And so, you know, I've ended up as a life coach, helping people move, go into new careers, right. change jobs. Um, right now with uh, what's going on with the COVID-19, a couple of my clients are having job issues and, and they didn't come to me for that, but I'm helping them with that. And, and so we go into so many areas of, your, of their lives and, and we're equipped to handle that from a, a coaching you know, standpoint. Well, again, as a, as a third party outside from it, you can kind of like if, 
you know, if you're having dinner and you got something that uh, you spilled, uh, you, if you can't see it. So the other person's got to be able to look at it and go, hey, you got something on your chin. <laughs> you got to have somebody else that can see it from the other side. And, uh, you know, the, you yeah, talked about the relationship with the, um, with the, the, the work. It can get into a situation where with this COVID thing, you're kind of quarantined with that person and it might get, you know, I'm getting a little... <laughs> You got to know how to handle that stuff. Crazy. Right? Yeah. Well, I work with primarily singles who are looking to be coupled. So it's a very interesting time to be dating. Sure. And um, I have clients who have connected with people and have budding relationships and they're being very creative. One, one of my clients lives here in Washington and I, I help my clients with their profiles. I'm an expert on online dating and I have a process and, and over 80% of my successfully coupled clients met through online dating sure. because it gives a way of people to connect and really see that uh, this is somebody I think I could really like have something and, you know, build something with. And, and so you're not wasting your time. Sometimes when you meet someone at a singles event, you don't know where they're coming from and what their goals are and what they're looking for and their aspirations. So this guy is real motivated to marry. He's divorced and, and he really wants to get remarried. He wants a family, you know, family and he's in his forties and I got him online and this woman from Australia contacted him and, um, they have something going actually. So, um, I am actually doing a joint session with the two of them. So once I do have a couple, sometimes I do coach the couple and help them really create what I call alignment and, and understanding of themselves and, and what they need in that relationship. Do you, do you so, just do your work via Skype or video like this? Or do you actually right, do Zoom, it? mostly Zoom, yeah. Do anything yeah. physically now, physically at, at a place? Do you ever get together? Um, I, I have seen clients physically. Um, I've stopped that right now. But um, yes, I live in the Washington, D.C. area. I would say about half of my clients live in D.C. But, you know, it depends on where you live and the traffic and, and, and the time you have. So I would say the majority of my clients we do as a Zoom and some of them on phone, <clears throat> still on phone, the old-fashioned um, one. Do you do speaking engagements? Oh, yes. I do quite a few speaking engagements. Okay, that's good um, to know. Because my background yeah, is in the event industry. so yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so, like, I'm doing, um, speaking to some meetups right now on how to create meaningful connections online. And so I have a couple of groups that are looking for online ways to um, entertain their, their um, community. Um, one is an, an event company in the DC area. And so I run my workshops through them and I like my motivated to marry workshop or um, uh, I have uh, seven steps for creating your energizing dating plan. And um, now they have to go online. So I'm doing one of them, my programs for them online. Um, people have to be um, very nimble at the, at, during these times. It also like in the business world kind of thing, you see a lot of people that they make friends online, Facebook or whatever, and then all of a sudden they shove their offer in front of you. And it's like, wait a minute, we got to do some courting before you try and sell me something. Mm -hmm. So like, a, do I like you? Do I want to do business with you? Yeah. Exactly. Do we share some of the values? I know who I kind of resonate to, with. I mean, I know we connected really nicely when we first met because we have so many things in common and, and, you know, we both love business and we're creative and, you know, so there are a lot of values that we share. We're in the same age group and, and all that. So there's so many. Yeah, that's important. That, like right? if you see somebody on like, you, you got to be authentic, I think, too, because if you're doing stuff on social media that's not the real you, and then people see it, that'll repel mm -hmm. them, you No. Know? Right, and like it's the attraction pr principle with anything, you know, what you put out there is what you attract, so that's what I help my clients to make sure that they're putting out the right stuff, and so they're attracting the right people, to the point where I had this guy I was working with, I finally got him online in late fall, and he really put himself out in December. And, and he's a, one of these techie guys who's a little, intro, very introverted actually. And so 
I got him onto one of the major sites and 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 his um, now fiance recognized that he was a good guy and, and contacted him and they connected. They were able to meet face to face back then. And um, they spent a lot of time together. They just got engaged, actually. She's cool. living with him now and, and just got engaged. So um, things can happen quickly or it really is up to the person um, what they you know what you need and and the pacing is is something that i talk with with all my clients are well. you an advocate of like i've heard the situation like if someone does a you know goes through a hard breakup or a hard divorce or something of letting that go for at least a year before you get back in the game because of those special holidays and things that might trigger things well you know um there was a really good book uh, by abigail trafford called crazy time and it really kind of helped me when i went through my divorce and a lot depends on it was interesting whether you're left or you're the lever it means to have you been planning this for a long time and just figuring out how we're going to do this sure. and how the marriage ended how long sometimes divorces really drag out because of the kids so it really i i mean my most of my answers is it, it depends sure. and and so it depends on your hurt how much you're hurt how much healing you need to do um, I worked with a therapist right after my divorce. I mean, I did not anticipate my divorce and I was the one who was like left holding the bag. And so I had to like, oh, well, how did this happen? Why did this happen? And I had to do a lot of self, you know, work to really acknowledge what happened and also to say, you know, to be okay with who I am because it was a real hit on my ego. So we have to be whole people before we can put ourselves out and really recouple. And so everybody has their own process. Um, I had a client, she met a guy who was in, in the middle of a divorce. And, and normally most, most people say, well, I don't want to date separated people. But it was a long time for that divorce. There were reasons for it. It had to do with the ex and some of the financial situation and so she they dated while he was still separated he finally got divorced and then they remarried so again i would take everything on a case-by-case -case basis it's That's really what what is that person's journey and how did they get to that and are they truly ready to put themselves out in a new relationship that makes total sense because you never know i mean it might be one of these soulmate kind of things and it's just like uh, connect let's do it <laughs> yeah you and know and they they got married and she was within a relationship for two years with a guy going real nowhere and i finally helped her have that conversation about her goals and what she wanted she wanted marriage she wanted a family and well when i did, got married i had some other relationships these people that i thought i wanted to be involved with and then i got real clear i was looking for somebody with no kids, no tattoos, no smoking, no drugs, no piercings, um, just natural. That's what I wanted. And I waited and waited and waited and waited. And then I found that person and it just kind of like is tight. But she does have a kid and he's old and off on his own now. But other than that, it's exactly what I was looking for because I was patient enough and I knew I was clear on what I wanted. So I wasn't out going for stuff I didn't want, you know? Right. Right. So, you know, I help my clients really, you know, we do the must haves and would like to haves. And sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, I look at, I find that a lot of people are looking at the wrong things. And, yeah. and so I really like shift their dating radar and I, you know, it's the inside stuff. It's what you want from life, your goals and, and your values and what's important to you. And there's some other things. I mean, there are definitely uh, compatibility issues. Um, what you can live with and what you can't live with. But sometimes, I mean, sometimes the person doesn't really look like who you thought they were going to be. Yeah. Um, I have a client that's in a mixed race um, relationship and he is very, he has his own faith and she's of the same faith. And um, it was very unusual. And, but yet he opened himself up to that. But that wasn't what he was originally looking for. Right. Um, you know, so it's interesting. Um, sometimes people have to open themselves up. The person is exactly who they wanted, but didn't really look like what they thought sure. they were going to meet. 
you know, so to not get stuck in that. And I've seen that situations a couple of times with some of my clients. They ended up with people maybe from a different religion or a different race. And, but the, the inside is there and the mm -hmm. respect is there. And there's a really wonderful relationship that's, that's built. Well, I think it is important to have a third party. I mean, I'm, I'm not being paid to say it or anything, but someone like you <laughs> that can see it again from the outside and kind of guide a person through it. I mean, you know, athletes have coaches and, you know, boxers have coaches. And you, you, if you're, you're not a, probably into boxing, but usually the guy that's the coach, you wouldn't expect him to be a boxer. He's just, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but he knows what to coach that person, how to motivate that person, how to Right. To well, I thing. mean, many people come to me because, I mean, I was in my late, I was 42 when I got remarried and had my child in my 40s. And, um, you know, so there's that group, the, the, the 30s and 40s, never married. And then I went through a divorce and, and I had to deal with that. So, you know, there's the divorce group. And so I think, you know, people also do want to be with somebody who's been on their journey and understands where they're coming from. And, and, you know, I can really, I also, you know, um, been involved with some widows groups and it's a very interesting situation. And I really feel for those people because sure. um, they didn't lose a partner, you know, because the marriage was bad. I mean, yeah, they didn't really on, separate. Right. Interest right. So, so they out. have different issues and, and to really look forward and, and, and not try to replicate that person, but to find the right person for them at this stage sure. of their life. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so if someone wants to learn more about you, how do you, what's the old website? How do they get a hold uh, of you? Yeah. So my website's motivated to marry. Um, if you go there, I have some, a lot of free stuff. That was my next um, question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have my blog and I have a, a freebie, the 10, um, my 10 uh, checklist for online dating. So you can see how you're doing and, and if you need to improve your online dating profile. Um, I have, um, I actually have some podcasts that I've done for, um, that's on iTunes. I think they're still there. And um, some, some, and if there, if you want to, there's a great quiz I created. So I can maybe give you that so you can put it with the notes, mtmquiz.com. Um, you'll go to a page where you can take to see how ready you are for a relationship and um, everything is like the different stages. So I like to say that I help my clients get to the point where they're um, in, in a committed relationship and those want to be engaged to the point where they're engaged. And I even help my clients, you know, there's always something that comes up. I call the glitches that need to be um, sure um work through and it's like you said helpful to have somebody to to problem solve with yeah because you never know what the situation might be you know so you, it's good to, it's again, not a it's deal always, breaker it's not always a deal breaker it could be an overbearing parent or um you know a lot of things you know come in the way um children come in the way um work comes in the way so you know navigating through those things and and you know to look at is is this a chronic situation or is this just a, a at this time they're do, dealing with this and and it, it they, you guys can get through it so okay together so it's motivated to marry or mtmquiz.com mtm yeah mtm motivated to marry mtm quiz and the website i'm trying to make motivated. it easy exactly yeah, that makes dot com yeah i, I and, figured it out know, in my head <laughs> yeah once you get on my i have a weekly newsletter i put out and i have a facebook group motivated to marry singles so you know you'll okay. if, if you want to learn more and, and you know come come into my world um there's okay. a lot i'm doing online well, what I do with this is I take this recording and then I beam it up to the internet and I post it on different blogs. And from the information I learned from you, then I use those keywords and those hashtags and stuff and put it out in the right spot. And that's how this whole synergy thing works. Wonderful. Well, I, <laughs> well, I appreciate don't like the to, work you're doing. Yeah, I don't like doing this too long because people got to condense it. And then if they want more information, they can get a hold of you and have a longer conversation. So Wonderful. perfect. Well, Amy, I appreciate you taking the time and maybe we'll do another one down the road if things change. Maybe there's something going on when this, this uh, quarantine thing gets over and people go out and play some more. Right. Okay. Thanks again for taking the time.
Well, thanks for having me. <laughs>